Yeah, just give it a little push. Hmm, behaving today. Uh, so hopefully in the next couple of weeks, once we've gotten this part a little bit more stable and we can give it bigger pushes, then we'll uh, start working on going forwards. Said it shall come back to zero. There we go. All right, so this is the Sarcos robot, um, so named because it was made by the Sarcos company. Um, they put their name on it, and it kind of looks like a name tag, so I guess we just went with that. Um, so it's hydraulically powered. There's a big pump in the other room that produces 3,000 PSI oil, which runs in through these black tubes here. Um, and so the robot has 34 uh, hydraulically actuated joints. There's seven in each leg, seven in each arm, three in the back. Uh, one of which is giving us electrical problems and being very twitchy right now, and three in the neck, one of which is just off to the side. Um, it also has uh, pneumatics in the hands, so, but we actually don't have that pump hooked up because we don't do a lot of manipulation, and the, the eyes pan tilt are electrically actuated. Um, the nice thing about this robot is that it has a lot of sensors. Um, so it has uh, six axis force torque sensors in each ankle in kind of this uh, little purple area. And each joint, in addition to having a potentiometer that measures an uh, angle, it also has uh, force sensing in each joint. Uh, so for most of them, that means uh, a strain gauge. So for a few of them, it's an actual crystal. Um, and of course, it also has an, an IMU on the hip. And there are cameras in the eyes, though we're not really using them right now. So the nice thing about this is we have the hydraulically actuated uh, joints, which don't require a large gearbox, which means we can do very high bandwidth force control. And we have all the sensors necessary to do that. So we can make a very compliant robot. So you can kind of shake it, and it feels kind of like a human. And it's not rigid like most robots. So uh, usually, if, uh, if you want to poke at the robot with a, a stick, okay. go for it. Kind of get a feel for just how stiff it is. Any, I mean, it won't hurt it just don't poke it, poke it anywhere electrical, but like up on the backpack's probably the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fine. And yeah. so we get it too hard, it does eventually fall down. No, no, it's fine. I spend most of my life knocking it over. Ronald, you want to get the pump? Or uh, I'll get it. Uh, usually the controller doesn't really know what to do once it's not in kind of a, a standing position. Uh, so rather, so we just turn off the pump and that kills all power to the robot and makes it safe again. Yeah, so this controller is just standing. It doesn't know how to take a step. Okay. So if you push it too hard, it, it does fall down. You can't, uh, I mean, it's, it's like a person. You can push it pretty hard, but go too far and it'll fall down. Yeah. Yeah, so it's much more stable from the side because it has the wide base of its feet. Um, so a little over 200 pounds. Uh, so it's basically the size of a small person and the weight of a big person. Yeah, it'll probably work. So what I'm working on is walking. And specifically what I'm trying to do is robust walking. So you should be able to give it a bit of a push and it won't fall down. Uh, right now, it's not too robust. Um, so what it's doing is when you give it a push, it can adjust kind of what it's doing with its ankles to stabilize it. But it's also able to adjust the timing and the location of its footsteps. So if I just kind of push on it constantly, you'll see it takes a very asymmetric gait, where it takes a big pause. And what it's trying to do is kind of, if I'm pushing it this way, it doesn't want to pick up its left foot because it'll fall down. So it's kind of trying to wait for me to stop, or at least wait till it can get its weight back under it before it picks up its foot. It's not trying to go forwards or really go anywhere in particular. It's just trying to balance. Um, the reason for doing this is if we walk forwards, we kind of run out of harness space very quickly. Uh, we have to do very short trials. And it's easier to just learn one thing at a time. Come on, kill it. Ah, I lifted it too much. The uh, foot didn't reach the ground. Yeah, it's not really meant to be manhandled around like that. So sometimes if you push them gently, it thinks of it just as a, as a perturbation and just tries to balance and it deals itself. But if it fights back against you, you need to push it harder and harder until it eventually falls. 